Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Thank you for listening to this segment, which is an excerpt from Speech in the Silence, the official podcast of Blazing Star Oasis in the San Francisco Bay Area, California. Speech in the Silence is a monthly program offering lectures, music, interviews, readings, announcements, and news. See the comments section on this video for a link to the complete program where this segment was first heard. Visit speechinthesilence.com to subscribe to the podcast to hear new programming as soon as it is available. Be sure to visit us on the web at speechinthesilence.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and like us on Facebook at Speech in the Silence. You may contact Contact us at the Lema Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Love is the law. Love under will. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love, love is the law. law. Love, love under will. will. This class is called the four weapons of a true magician. And in general, those with ears to hear, let them hear. Thou hast no right but to do thy will. Do that no other shall say nay. This true will is important. Magic is a spiritual science which has the potential to help us in learning to know our true wills and to cause change effectively in accordance with that will. The knowledge and practice of magic makes us into a magician, one who has mastered the elements of existence and who can move among them and interact with them so as to manifest, affect, and act or accomplish that true will. Magic is the pursuit of the same thing as that old spiritual pursuit to know thyself, written over the temple at Delphi. Also, as Buddha said, it's better to conquer oneself than to conquer 10,000 armies. Magic is therefore the pursuit to conquer oneself. In another sense, a magician is one who has taken the raw materials of the self, so to speak, and through the process of working on them, comes to perfect these materials. So magic is, therefore, the pursuit to perfect oneself. With magic, we have the tools, the theory, and the practice to come to know ourselves deeper, to perfect ourselves into instruments of our true wills, and to conquer the four elements, to conquer the universe, which is to conquer ourselves. In another way, you can see the old adage, as above, so below. The one, the all, the Tao, Brahman, Horus, whatever you want to call it. This works in accordance with divine law. This law is reflected into the macrocosm in the perfect order of the heavens, and it's reflected into each one of us in the microcosm of the order of Earth. So the great work of a magician is to align one's own nature with the divine nature, the personal will with the universal will. And one will find they are not two laws. They are simply two expressions of one law in heaven and on earth. So in general, my point is this isn't about glamour or cool stuff, although it may be your will to indulge in those things to some extent. This magic is the ultimate existential pursuit, the attainment of your true motion, your true purpose, the fulfillment or actualization of your potential as a being. And this is the ultimate spiritual pursuit, the attainment of the truth of your being, of your divine nature. And this requires sincerity. And I believe sincerity is the mark of a true magician, not necessarily seriousness, but sincerity. So to the magician, a god will not indwell a temple that is poorly prepared. So in line with this, the magician believes their task is to properly prepare their temple so that their godhead may indwell, so to speak. And that's why it said the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. You probably shouldn't soil it too badly then. And this is why there is distinct placement of furniture in the temple. The furniture and, and all the objects in the temple. It reflects the properly prepared self that enables the higher principles represented by the individuals in the ritual, the proper space to work their magic. So in order to fashion this, this temple of the self to be the most complete expression 
of the god of its true nature, the magician seeks to discover, to purify, to strengthen, strengthen, and to dedicate the nature and powers of her own being to the accomplishment of the true will. Magic, on one level, I guess, offers a host of tools that will enable you to discover the, the hidden or latent aspects of your being's nature, your being's powers or potential, so to speak. To the true magician, I believe, magic is not simply a set of tools, it is a way of life. Magic is driven by a guiding principle, the knowledge and accomplishment of your true will, not a set of techniques. It's the constant pursuit to know, to perfect, and to conquer the self, so as to do one's will with the utmost of one's free will, with full awareness, with balance, and wholeness. When we do our wills, we are in harmony with the divine law, the divine will, and we work with the momentum <coughs> or inertia of the universe instead of against it. So I figured I would start by answering core questions of, you know, what is a magician? What is magic? What does a magician do? And what I've just said is pretty much the core of it, basically, to know and do your true will, to know thyself, to conquer yourself, to perfect yourself into this properly prepared temple so the God may indwell, so the will can work through you. And in this class, I'm going to talk specifically about the four weapons of a magician. And so kind of a particular aspect of this more general idea. And I'm not going to talk a lot or really much at all about the esoteric symbolism of these weapons, but what they actually refer to, what they actually are, and how to work with them. To you know, They're your weapons. They're your things with which you work your will. So there's this idea of the five elements. Um, in traditional hermeticism, at least, there's five elements. There's earth, air, water, fire, and spirit, or ether. Spirit is the fifth element, the quintessence, which is what quintessence literally means, the fifth essence. Um, and I would like to emphasize that the magician is not earth. The magician is not air. The magician is not water. The magician is not fire. The magician is spirit. And spirit works through the four elements, but is not um, limited by them. So we can imagine the cross of the elements with spirit in the center and the four elements on the sides. That would be an image of the magician. The four elements, earth, air, water, fire, they represent everything in the universe, everything of which we are aware. It is the one divided into four. So in the microcosm, the magician herself, there are four magical weapons. There's earth, which is the disc. This is not a disc, it's a patent, but it will, it will suffice. Uh, disc, sometimes coin, sometimes pentacle. There is air, which is the dagger or sword, which is a big dagger. There's water, which is the, the cup, the chalice, the grail, and fire, which is the wand. And this is a staff, but it will have to suffice. Spirit, in the temple there is theoretically a lamp that is at the center, up top. Spirit in the macrocosm is this lamp, it's the sun. In the microcosm, the altar is spirit. It is the magician, the phallic edifice upon which we place the weapons for use. So these four weapons are symbols of the elements in yourself that as a magician you come to know and conquer and perfect. And the right ordering of them or the wise ordering of them allows for spirit to manifest fully. So in the microcosm of the magician, what, what do these things mean? What do they symbolize? Well, earth is the body, physicality, sensuality. Here, the dagger is the intellect or the conceptual mind. Water, this cup, represents emotions and also intuition. Fire, the wand, represents our desires, 
and also willpower or volition itself. Spirit, the altar here, is true will. The four weapons are on the altar of true will. When these four weapons are in harmony, when they're purified, strengthened, and dedicated to one object, the magician can work her true will. There is a text called Libra Libre, sub figura 30, also known as the Book of Balance, that gives all the secrets necessary to this work. Um, they're not secret, but it's public, very public. You can get it online in, in many different books. What's its number? 30. Libra Libre, sub figura 30, XXX. Um, this is basically lessons for a magician. At the beginning it says equilibrium is the basis of the work. If thou thyself hast not a sure foundation, whereon wilt thou stand to direct the forces of nature? That's a rhetorical question. Uh, <laughs> nowhere is the answer. <laughs> each, each of these weapons has to be balanced in itself and balanced with one another. So in Libra Libre it also says, Remember that unbalanced force is evil, that unbalanced severity is but cruelty and oppression, but that also unbalanced mercy is but weakness which would allow and abet evil. Same idea, uh, balance, equilibrium. It also says, establish thyself firmly in the equilibrium of forces. In the center of the cross of the elements, which I mentioned before, that cross from whose center the creative word issued in the birth of the dawning universe. Again, equilibrium, balance both in themselves and with each other. So I'm going to go through each one of these weapons in more depth. So, earth, the body, physicality, sensuality. This is the pentacle or disc. Libra Libre, which I will constantly refer to throughout this, says, worship and neglect not the physical body, which is thy temporary connection with the outer and material world. So worship. In the new Aeon, we do not see the body in the microcosm or the material world as a whole in the macrocosm as evil. Like I said, the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, so it should be treated like a temple with care, with reverence. Don't get it too dirty or clean it up if you do. Um, something I wrote at one point that a lot of people seem to like is this, this quote from some essay, I cannot remember which, but it's this idea that the earth is not a prison, but a temple where the sacrament of life itself is enacted. The body is not corrupt. It's a pulsing and thriving vessel for the expression of energy. Sex isn't simple, but a mysterious conduit of pleasure and of power and an image of the nature, the ecstatic nature of all things. What does the Book of the Law say? It says a lot of things, but um, <laughs> chapter 2, verse 22, if you are into that, it says, Be strong, O man, lust, enjoy all things of sense and rapture. Fear not that any god shall deny thee for this. So, in this new aeon, we worship the body and we partake of material things. That does not mean we overindulge in them. It does not mean that they are all that there is. It doesn't mean that we should even be hedonistic, but it, it most certainly means that we don't reject the body. We don't reject the material world as a cage, as a sinful thing to be transcended or cut off or cut away. That is the attitude, one of many attitudes of the magician for Earth in this disc. What else does Libra, Libra say? It says, neglect not. And this is simple in theory, which is take care of your body. Take care of material things. These are not evil. They are necessities. In a way, it is the foundation of the pyramid of the self. If you don't have a firm base, everything will crumble. If your body is not being taken care of, you will not be able to work your will in the world to great efficacy. Go away. It will go away if you ignore it. But also, equilibrium is the basis of the work. What is the opposite of neglecting the body? And I think the word for that that we have is vanity. So obsession over your body, obsession over appearance, even obsession over health, that is also unbalanced. So we need to find, strike a balance between this neglect and over 
indulgence, vanity. So suppose we were to purify the body. What would that mean? It's basically get rid of that stuff that makes it unhealthy. Healthy is a word for what we want. It is balanced. We don't eat too much. We don't eat too little. We don't sit around and do nothing. We don't constantly move around. So one very obvious example is don't eat a lot of junk food. Okay? Purify your, your body, your disc with that. If we purify something, we should also consecrate it. We should strengthen it. And how do we strengthen the body? Well, we take care of it. Um, there is a word that we have called exercise that is helpful. Taking the stairs instead of the escalator may be your magical practice for strengthening your disc. <laughs> uh, Libra Libre says strengthen and control the animal passion. If we strengthen them, but we don't control them, they will control us. Our liberty is actually increased through discipline in this way. Uh, Corley says in um, Book 4, Part 2, quote, It is important that he should strive to excel in some sport, and that, that that sport should be the one best calculated to keep this body in health. This is in Book 4, Part 2, about magic. And he's saying you should um, excel in a sport best calculated to keep your body in health. He saw bodily health as important, in theory at least. Also, the Book of the Law, chapter 2, verse 70, has these words to say, it says, Wisdom says, be strong, then canst thou bear more joy. And one could potentially interpret that on the level of the body as at least one interpretation. And this, this sport or whatever physical activity you do to keep your health, I, I would add that some discipline that is physical is important and not necessarily in terms of exercise but I think the best example is like a musical instrument it's a physical thing that you can excel in you know why why would I say that it's because that represents the development of an awareness of your body and the development of the control of your body it takes a lot of coordination to play a guitar so like I said all these things should be equilibrated the elements of Earth, like all elements, can be unbalanced or it can be balanced. Um, Libra Libre says that when Earth is unbalanced, we tend towards grossness and avarice. Um, what is what is grossness? Kind of like gluttony, except not that far out there. No, I, I would say that's exactly exactly right. There's another of the seven sins, um, sloth. Yes. Yeah, I would say sloth and gluttony. If you Smush those together, you would have grossness <laughs> on several levels. Um, so if if the body's not taken care of, if it's neglected, we have sloth, we have laziness, inertia. Um, we essentially we have a lack of energy. We are tired. I would even go so far as to say we have a lack of sensual desires that is unbalanced. So take a moment, write down at least one thing where you may be gross, <laughs> where you're slothful, where you do not have energy. What is a, a time that you feel slothful? What is a particular part of life where you do not feel the energy to engage? We all have it. Just got to think of it. It could be as simple as getting up in the morning. That would be sloth. Actually, not getting up in the morning would be sloth. But you catch my drift. So if, if we think of sloth, as a lack of sensual desires, what's the opposite? It's it's basically um, gluttony. It is filling up the body. It's an excess of sensual desire. And I want to kind of repeat that sensual desires, food, drink, sex, that whole thing, um, they're not bad, except when they're unbalanced. And even then, they're not evil. They're just bad. They're you fucking yourself over pretty much. I think that the Book of the Law has very good advice in how one should approach, I guess, satisfying your sensual desires. Um, in, in chapter 2, verse 70, it says, Be not animal, refine thy rapture. If thou drink, drink by the 890 rules of art. If thou love, exceed by delicacy. 
And if thou do aught joyous, let there be subtlety therein. I know I have no idea what the 90 rules of art are, but I guess those are for you to figure out for yourself. So like I said, unbalanced with earth is grossness and avarice. Uh, we just talked about grossness. Avarice is a word for greed. It is hoarding, in a way. It, avarice actually comes from a root that means craving or longing for. This is shown so amazingly obviously in our age that it's a platitude to say that our culture is materialistic. We have materialistic desires. We want material things for their own sake rather than what? Rather than as an expression of our will. Rather than something that is part of that will or interacting with that will. We all do it. Everyone always has. But America in 2013 is... Uh, glaring symbol of this imbalance. So, yeah, I mean, having something for its own sake, I mean, it's good to have shelter and money for food, for example, but seeking, you know, grandiose Victorian mansion and eating filet mignon every meal, that's, that's unbalanced. And I use hyperbole to make the point, but we all do this to some extent in many different ways. I think you should write that one thing, where you are greedy, where you want things for yourself, and for no real purpose, you just want it. It's cool, it's new, um, it's shiny, it's slightly shinier than version 4. Um, I want to add that, you know, like I've said before, we all have these things, we all do these things, and there's, there's no point feeling shame about being gluttonous, about being slothful, about being greedy. But they are things that we have to be aware of. They have signals. Feeling feeling tired, feeling uh, craving for that thing we saw on TV. Um, these are signals that we do not need to indulge. To indulge in whatever comes into mind is the opposite of what a magician is. A magician is able to choose. They have choice. They have free will to indulge or not. And if they do indulge, the way, or not the way, the extent to which they indulge, um, indulging in a in a certain way that is fulfilling a will. In terms of the imbalance of earth, I would I would also add, like I mentioned before, vanity, which is the opposite of neglect of our body, obsession over appearances. I'm, I'm sweaty. I'm, I'm kind of gross, but. I'm okay with it. <laughs> if, if you can handle it, I can too. So, unbalanced earth. Such a downer. What about balanced earth? Libra Libre says that balanced earth is laborious and patient. Now, we don't associate the word laborious with anything positive, usually, but laborious basically just means industrious or, or um, hardworking. Where is somewhere that, that you feel? Uh, laborious. Where are you hardworking? And what is it about that that gets you to be that way? How do you keep that balance of your disc in that instance? Write that shit down. Do more of it. Expand that to other parts of your life. So laborious um, and patient. Patient is a word that I find hard to describe, but it gives me a sense of peaceful of not obsessing over getting results instantly. It reminds me of Crowley's motto, Perdurabo, I will endure to the end. It also reminds me of the Book of the Law, pure will on a slave's purpose, delivered from the lust of result, is everywhere perfect. Which, to me, and I'm a center of pestilence, so fuck you, and you can shun me, um, it basically is non-attachment to results to expectations, to results to the fruits of your labor, as Hindus would say. That does not mean you don't go for those things, but whatever comes of it, or does not come of it, you accept patiently. Laborious and patient are the balance of earth. I would add worship, as mentioned in Libra Libre. It's that reverent attitude balanced between the extremes of neglect and vanity. What is another characteristic of earth? So Crowley said, that the symbol of the weapon of Earth is a disc. 
not a coin. And why did he say this? One reason is that the disc is always spinning. A coin just kind of lies there. What does that mean, that the disc is always spinning? It means that Earth and all earthly things are impermanent. It means things always change. Also, as we all know, the body itself is impermanent in many ways. The cells that run through your body right now are not the same cells that you're born with. You are a completely different person. Your social security number is more permanent than you are. <laughs> um, and your body will eventually pass away. I would say Philema walks a middle path between attachment and neglect. We take care of the body, but we're not overly attached to it. This requires an awareness that the body is, like Libra Libre says, that temporary connection with the outer and material world. Um, William Blake said in The Marriage of Heaven and Hell that that called body is a portion of soul discerned by the five senses, the chief inlets of the soul in this age. In this age, it's temporary and our connection to the outer world. So the magician is marked by this idea that they work with the forces of nature, not against them. And so the, the magician needs to acknowledge the temporary, constantly changing, impermanent nature of the body and material things. They are the shadows that pass and are done. And also the body changes, we change. The needs of an infant are not the needs of a youth, or an adolescent, or an adult, or a senior, I guess. And like I said, the body will perish. The magician in this new aeon faces death, eyes open, head erect, just like in the Gnostic Mass, where we stand when we face the high altar. We can see death as the, the seal of our age-long love with existence, like the Book of Law says. In another way, if you want to use magical terminology, the, the body is like a talisman. It is prepared and used with great care, but it is ultimately discarded. It's the nature of the talisman. Or a straw dog, if you like, without aging. Um, the attachment to the body is one of the first things attacked in, in Eastern traditions. You're probably aware of that to some extent. I mean, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, etc. They often harp on this point. You're going to die. Go, go with the program. In the New Aeon, I think we do acknowledge this exact same truth that all is change. Yet, I said before, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Again, it's idea of balance between ideas. So, so Earth. This, this disc thing, this weapon. What have I said? What have I, what have I said at you <laughs> up until now? Worship the body. Have, be reverent. Um, do not be neglectful and do not be vain and obsessive. The body and the material world are not evil. They should not be avoided. They are things to be embraced with balance. Lust and joy, all things of sense and action. Um, so worship and neglect not. Take care of the body's needs. Food, water, exercise. Wisdom says be strong. And be wary of imbalance with um, sloth and laziness, gluttony or um, indulgence, overindulgence, and avarice and greed. You know, refine thy rapture. And cultivate balance. Be laborious or hardworking and also patient, peaceful, and enduring, non attached to results. And this non attachment extends to impermanence of earth, which means we have to be adaptive. If I lost control of my left arm, I would not lie down and die. I would adapt and not, perhaps not do certain things anymore, but I would certainly change the way that I do things. And that occurs on different levels all the time to us. We lose things, we gain things, things change. Certain things um, grow hair and gain power. Certain things atrophy. You have to adapt. 